Good morning and welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. Welcome to this service of worship for, uh, gosh, July the 19th. Hard to believe we're that far into the month of July uh, already. But however you're joining us, we're so glad that you're here. So glad that you've uh, taken time out of your day, uh, out of your morning uh, to, to worship God with us. And uh, there's just one thing we want you to do for us. Uh, I guess, first of all, I should say my name is Colin Taylor. I'm the pastor here at Grace United Methodist Church right in the middle of the Houston Heights, uh, which is not far from downtown, of course, uh, like many of you know. So that one thing that we want to ask you to do is to let us know that you're here. We always like to have record of your attendance. So, of course, there's a couple of different ways. If you're participating in worship on live stream uh, our, on our website, I would love for you to go to the navigate to the upper right hand corner where there's a link that simply says connection card. That'll pull up a different page where you can fill out all the names of the people who are participating in worship with you this morning or whenever you happen to be uh, clicking on our live worship services. Then if you are participating in worship today via Facebook Live, uh, simply just comment in the comment section below uh, so that we know that you're here, so that we know that you're worshiping God with us this morning. We have a lot of fun things in store for you. We're starting a new sermon series today uh, called Heroes as we focus in on Vacation Bible School characters. And we'll talk a little bit more about that during the sermon time. But it should be a good time uh, together. And I know that God will be encountered. Let's uh, be about the worship this morning. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm filling in for Miss Mary. I'm Captain Grace, like the church. And I'm here with my trusty sidekick, Batgirl. Just kidding. I'm really Miss Mary. You didn't know that, did you? Because I was wearing a mask, right? Well, did you know that friends like Batgirl or Spider-Man or Batman or others that wear the masks, that they wear the mask not for themselves, but for others? So they're wearing it so that if their friends get in, well, they're wearing it because if the bad guys knew their secret identity, then they might be able to go after their friends and family and, and hurt them. And that would, that is just what terrifies the superheroes so much is not themselves getting hurt, but the ones that they love getting hurt. And that made me think about how we can wear masks right now. Some really smart doctors are saying that if we wear a mask and everybody else wears a mask, that we're gonna protect our friends and family. We're gonna protect others. And I think that's so wonderful. So I hope that you will think about what Jesus says. He says that we should treat people the way we want to be treated. So if you want other people to wear masks, you should set a good example and wear one yourself so that you can make sure that you are treating other people just like you want to be treated. 
And so I hope that we can all choose to be superheroes and wear our masks out in public so that we can protect our friends and family and our neighbors. And I hope that you will join us next month in August for Vacation Bible School, because we're all going to be superheroes at it. So let's all put our hands in the air and hands in prayer now. Dear Jesus, who loves us, help us, we pray, to be your good children and live the right way. Amen. Bye, boys and girls. Won't you join me in the historic words of the Apostles' Creed uh, as we together affirm our faith? You'll find the words uh, right below me in the screen, on your screen. Won't you pray with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue now to be in a spirit of prayer. Uh, as we pray together. Let's, let's pray together now. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this great church that has been uh, doing ministry in the Heights and in the Heights community for more than 100 years. God, we ask a special pr prayer on us this day, those worshiping this morning, those who encounter this worship service online at any point. We ask God that you fill us up with your Holy Spirit and keep us ever present, ever mindful uh, of your call in our lives to serve those uh, all around us, whether we agree with them politically or uh, ecumenically or, or on any other uh, thing that comes across in our lives. We ask that you help us to be a people of peace as we indeed continue to worship the Prince of Peace, who taught us to pray in a, spe in a special way, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to that time in our service when uh, we ask you to sort of respond to all the things that we've said together and prayed together and all the things that we will hear from God today. We ask that you respond. And one of the ways that we ask you to respond is financially. Of course, the great ministries of this church, uh, a lot of them anyway, are funded by your gifts. Uh, and so I want to encourage you to be as generous as you can uh, with your church as we continue to uh, look for new ways to be in ministry in this very, uh, very interesting time in which we find ourselves uh, when lots of businesses aren't open, when, when we're not really able to gather together as we usually do. Of course, there's lots of ways that you can give to the church. You can text uh, Grace UMC Heights. That's all one word. You can text that to 77977, and uh, that's our text to give program. You can do that. That's a pretty easy way to give. You can also visit our website uh, by visiting graceintheheights.org forward slash give. And that's another pretty easy and also electronic way and very secure way uh, to ensure that your gifts uh, come to this, uh, your church. And then if you aren't able to or just are not comfortable giving uh, via text or via online giving, you certainly can just drop a check in the mail. We do have someone here uh, at the church every week from Monday through Thursday uh, checking the mail and, and, and making sure the business side of the church uh, is running smoothly and, and appropriately. So I want to invite you to uh, be in prayer with me as we ask God and thank God for the gifts we've been given. Let's pray together. Gracious and holy and loving God, uh, many of us have been blessed beyond measure, and we ask God that you help us to be responsible with our gifts as we give those some of those gifts that you first gave us back to the church. Help God for this church to continue finding those in need that we might put these dollars into mission and ministry. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
We've got a couple of announcements that we want to make sure that you're aware of, a couple of cool ministry opportunities coming up. Uh, one of which is our first ever, my first ever, uh, honestly in my entire career, to do what we're calling drive-through contactless communion, or just for short, drive-through communion. On Sunday, August the 2nd from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., I want to invite you to come up to the church. Now, I know some of you haven't physically been to the church in weeks and weeks or even months uh, and so I want to invite you to come on up to the church and you can pull through the covered area that's behind the sanctuary on the east side of the sanctuary. Uh, and uh, I'll be there along with several other staff members uh, to have communion with you. Now, the reason we're going to call it contactless communion is because we want to mitigate the risk of spreading coronavirus or really any other germs as much as possible. So what that means for you is that we want to invite you to bring your own communion elements in the car with you. Uh, bring a little bit of juice and bring a little bit of bread. Uh, and then when you pull through wearing your mask, and, and I'll be masked as well, we'll have a brief 15 or 20 second uh, communion liturgy together. Uh, I'll ask God's presence to bless those elements that you have in your car. And then you can consume them immediately on the way home, uh, when you get home, however you want to uh, have communion that day will be up to you. But we'll be able to at least interact a little bit in a safe way, uh, in a socially distant and responsible way. By the way, if you happen to come up that day on Sunday, August the 2nd, you can also pick up your Vacation Bible School craft bags. If you have registered for a Vacation Bible School, which I hope that you will, uh, you can pick up your bags uh, that day as well. So again, drive through Contactless Communion on Sunday, the August the 2nd. That's the first Sunday in August from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, and again, we want you to bring your own uh, bring your own elements. Now, if you happen to, f to forget your elements, we are going to be providing uh, this sort of two-in-one uh, sealed uh, communion elements if you need them, if you happen to forget them or you don't have them. Uh, so we will have something if you need to, but of course that wouldn't be as contactless as the other way. So anyway, bring your own elements if you're uh, able to do so. And then we also, don't forget, have a, I do a weekly devotional. Uh, uh, most of the time it's on Wednesday at 11. This past Wednesday I had to do it a little bit earlier because I had a meeting pop up right at 11. Uh, but most of the time we do it on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. And I spend five or six or sometimes even ten minutes talking about a topic that's uh, uh, going on in our culture or in our society today. And then I compare it to a short scripture reading. And then we always have a little bit of prayer time. That's via Facebook Live on Grace United Methodist Church. Uh, church's Facebook page and then we put it on our website and it's also put on YouTube later so if you can't consume that devotion when it's actually happening you can watch it in a couple of different places uh, outside of Facebook and then finally don't forget we I mentioned this a little bit earlier in our contactless communion uh, we have vacation Bible school coming up uh, that'll be uh, August the 2nd through August the 6th and the neat thing about Vacation Bible School this year is that it's going to be virtual. It's going to be totally online. Uh, so that means if you have a grandson or granddaughter that lives you know, far away in another city or another state, they can participate with us. Uh, all you need to do to register is visit our website, and it's one of the main pages on the home page. We have a scrolling page there. So there'll be one of the announcements, one of the scrolling announcements on the main page, uh, on the home page. Click that. And that'll take you to a document where you can register yourself, your child, niece, nephew, grandchild, however you want to do that. But we hope that you do that uh, and we hope that you do it soon because it's going to be a lot of fun. And we have some neat t-shirts that are available too that you can get uh, on our website. That's all, all, those are all of the um, announcements that we have for you. And now I want to invite you to sort of switch your concentration from some of the events and ministry opportunities that we have going on or coming up here at the church and sort of just begin to uh, focus in on scripture. We're starting a new sermon series today called Heroes of the Bible. We're going to look at three different characters in the Bible uh, that the uh, Vacation Bible Schoolers will be learning about in their Vacation Bible School in a few weeks. And of course, the theme of Vacation Bible School this year is heroes. So we're kind of doing a sermon series ahead of time so the adults can learn some of the things that the kids are going to learn in just a few weeks. So I hope that you'll be able to join us for Vacation Bible School. And I hope that you're looking forward to this new sermon series called Heroes. And our first Heroes scripture comes from the Old Testament, comes from 1 Samuel chapter 16. And we're going to read verses 1 through 12. Uh, hear now the word of God. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, 
for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, they looked on Eliab, they thought, Surely this is the Lord's anointed one now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and each time Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for he is the one. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. And I want to invite you along there at home to respond with me by saying, thanks be to God. Amen. As I mentioned just, just a moment ago before I started the scripture, today we begin a new sermon series called, simply called, Heroes. During this series, we're going to be learning, learning about uh, various biblical characters, some of which I think you will know. Of course, today we're looking at David. Uh, I bet you've heard of him before. And some, perhaps, that you may not have heard of or not for, as familiar with, but all of whom uh, did or performed some sort of uh, what we're identifying as heroic act. They were heroes, even though they didn't expect to be. That's kind of like what's going on uh, around us right now, isn't it? We see heroes, uh, everyday heroes, all around us. There are all kinds of heroes surrounding us and, and helping us, lending a hand when we need it, uh, when, we, when we didn't expect for so many to be around us. So one of the reasons that we're going to be looking at these characters uh, is that they're going to be in, as I said, in our Vacation Bible School curriculum a little bit later. I know I mentioned that. Uh, earlier, but that's going to be on August the 2nd through the 6th. So I thought it might be fun for some of us who may not participate in Vacation Bible School uh, to learn about some of the same characters that our kids and our volunteers and our staff are going to learn about during Vacation Bible School. So as I mentioned already this week, we're going to be talking about David, but we're going to be talking about King David before he came, before he became king, before he was even anointed king. So instead of studying his war record or how faithful he was to God throughout his life or even his myriad of mistakes that he made as an adult, we're going to be examining the beginning of his life, the beginning of his sort of public career, uh, his, his humble beginnings. We'll learn, I think, that when we look at David and his childhood and when we also take into account some of the cultural traditions of the time, he would have been among the last choices for a hero, much less a king. And then the next Sunday, which will be the last Sunday in July, we'll learn about Abigail and how her wise, quick, and decisive actions saved the day, as my son would say. And then finally, on the first Sunday in August, and remember that's the day we're going to be doing our contactless communion, uh, on that day, our sermon topic will focus on the most well-known hero of the Bible uh, in the entire Bible. Of course, we'll be looking at Jesus himself. But before we start learning about David and, and that day on which he was anointed, let's see if we can come up with what exactly it means to be 
a hero. What exactly, what, what definition might we commonly use to say that person is a hero? One of the places I often look when I need a definition, uh, a short and concise definition of something simply is just dictionary.com. And so I went to dictionary.com and typed in hero and it came through with that short and concise definition that I was looking for. So dictionary.com says this, a hero is, quote, a person noted for courageous acts or nobility of character. And I think I can get on board with that, but it comes with some complications, I would say. For instance, take a Medal of Honor winner. The stories of bravery that accompany these, um, these American soldiers performing some act usually takes the life of, or many lives of, enemy combatants. A hero for us, sure, but to those whom they opposed, perhaps someone to be despised or, or vilified. Is there, so I went in search of, is there such a thing as a hero that is loved by all concerned? I came up with this, this one. This, perhaps this is an example of a hero that is, can be loved by all. Uh, what about six-year-old Bridger Walker out of Cheyenne, Wyoming? Have you heard this story? Uh, it was just a few days ago that six-year-old Bridger and his four-year-old uh, sister were outside playing together when Bridger noticed a strange dog beginning to approach them. He knew, knew it wasn't safe for either of them, so he began to walk over to where his sister was playing in order that he might take her by the hand and, and take her on inside where he thought it would be safer. When out of nowhere, the dog was, not, was no longer just sort of in the area, but in fact suddenly charged both of them. And that's when Bridger acted. Bridger, rather than trying to take his sister by the hand and getting her inside, immediately leapt in front of Bridger, hoping that the dog would attack him instead of his sister. And it did. He was bitten around the face and scratched all over his body. Uh, but he was able to escape the dog and get his sister and himself back inside where he rightfully knew it was safe. Later on at a doctor's uh, office, he received more than 90 stitches from a plastic surgeon uh, to, to, of course, help with scarring and is recovering at home now. And when asked about uh, why he did this to help his sister by his father, uh, Little Bridger said, if someone was going to die, I thought it should be me. Is Bridger a hero? Captain America actor uh, Chris Evans certainly thought so, and I would agree. Chris Evans via Instagram sent young Bridger a sweet message saying how proud he was, how proud Captain America was of him, and he was so proud of Bridger that he was going to send him a genuine Captain America shield, one of the ones used in the movie itself, to encourage Bridger to continue to be a great kid. Is that a hero? Or what about Officer Cameron Mesajewski out of Sterling Heights, Michigan, who responded to a 911 call this past week? He pulled up to the house and found a very, not violent, but very frightening scene. He was handed a tiny three-week-old child who was blue about the face and not breathing. He never once got, and this is all captured via uh, a dashboard camera in his police cruiser. He never once got anxious or panicky or outwardly scared. You can see that he calmly, he was holding the baby like a football, calmly assessing the baby, saying, oh, she's blinking, we know she's conscious. And then he just turned the baby over and gave her a couple of back thrusts, cleared the airway, and you can hear the, the baby begin to cry. And the distraught mother who was, was uh, walking back and forth in a just sheer panic just collapses in relief when she hears that Officer Mesa, Mesa Juski had saved his daughter, her daughter's life. And later on in the press release, the Sterling Heights PD said, if it wasn't for Officer Mesa Juski's quick and calm and life-saving action, the outcome of this incident could have been tragically different. Is he a hero? Or maybe Captain Brett 
Crozier, the former commander, commanding officer of the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, USS Theodore Roosevelt, who, uh, at least in my opinion, long before most Americans realized how bad coronavirus would get, or even how contagious uh, cor the coronavirus is, he acted because uh, he found on his ship, on his aircraft carrier that he commanded, he began to see how quickly the coronavirus spread throughout his ship. He saw his officers and his sailors getting sick by the dozens. And he raised a red flag. He emailed 10 fleet admirals begging for protection, begging for help. Eventually, more than 600 hundred sailors aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt tested positive. But Captain Crozier was not applauded. Captain Crozier was, in fact, relieved of his command and will not be considered for future commands because of the way he went about his appeal for help. They said it was too public, uh, essentially that he uh, was prone to panic. And after being relieved of command, as he was departing the USS Theodore Roosevelt for the very last time, you can hear, if you want to watch the video, it's really, really touching. You can see thousands of sailors lined up along the flight deck, yelling and screaming and thanking Captain Crozier for standing up and screaming their appreciation for his help. Now, the Roosevelt it itself was eventually entirely evacuated, save for a skeleton crew and the entire ship deep cleaned. It was off active duty for more than two months. He lost his command, but his sailors were helped. Is he a hero? Maybe. So what exactly is a hero? Was Bridger a hero? Captain Crozier? What about Officer Mesajewski? Does a hero have to be somebody that, like Captain Crozier, potentially saves, you know, hundreds of lives, if not thousands of lives? Or does a, a hero have to be somebody who, in the, in the face of sheer danger, is able to somehow control their fears? Sure. I think those definitions carry weight, carry water, as it were. But I think one of the most important characteristics of a Christian hero one that dictionary.com does not mention is one that is the focus of our sermon today. The focus, the person who the focus of our sermon today embodies humility. Humility. Take good old David, for instance. His father, Jesse, had seven sons, of which David, actually he had eight sons, of which David was the youngest. And if you'll remember back with me, Jewish law and familial tradition dictated that the eldest son was to be the leader of the family upon the death of the patriarch, upon the death of the father. Patriarchy itself was handed down from eldest son to eldest son. Now, some of the older younger brothers, the ones that are not quite the eldest but close to the eldest, they might be expected to take over if the elder son gets sick or if the elder son dies. But the further you were away from being the eldest, the more unlikely it became that you would ever lead the house or the family. Oh, sure, you could leave the house and start your own family. You could own land and lots of other things. But inheritance itself was simply out of the question. Leadership roles within the family anyway were largely also out of the question. So where we encounter Holy Scripture today, the prophet Samuel is looking to replace Saul as king. Now we've talked about this before, but at this point Saul proved to be a pretty good king except for the fact that he disobeyed God. And God, for all intents and purposes, is through with Saul, at least as so far as Saul being the king of Israel. So God tells Samuel to seek out Jesse. Now, Jesse is one of four Old Testament characters that, say, that, uh, that is said of them, they died sinless. So Jesse is an extremely important character. He is even in, mentioned in the New Testament as in uh, the lineage of Jesus. So uh, God tells Samuel to go seek out this important man named Jesse for one of his sons 
will be the next king. Samuel does this, and, and Jesse has his sons, you know, clean themselves up uh, because while they don't know exactly why Samuel is there, they do know that it's going to be one of those divider days. Like, there's always going to be before this time. This is an important thing that Samuel has come to do. So let's, be, let's put our best foot forward. So we, we find that Jesse and Samuel are, begin to examine uh, all of Samuel's, all of Jesse's sons. Uh, but when Jesse sends for his sons to be examined by Samuel, he doesn't even include his youngest because of that aforementioned Jewish law and familial tradition that youngest sons don't receive much leadership. So he doesn't even send for David when he sends for his sons. But then one by one, all seven of his sons who are present are paraded in front of Samuel. And each time the Lord says to Samuel, nope, nope. Nope, not that one either. To the extent that Jesse, I, I think that, that Samuel turns to Jesse, and I always think he does this in ex exasperation, saying, well, haven't you any other sons? And you can almost hear Jesse's confusion in his response in the scripture, because he says something along the lines of, well, yeah, but it's just David. He's out herding the sheep. As if to say, yeah, I have another son, but you're not going to want anything to do with him. It's just David. Of course, Samuel asks Jesse to send for him right away. And when David shows up, Scripture leads us to believe that Samuel knew immediately that David the beautiful young man, the youngest of eight sons, that David was the one. That despite his slight nature, his ruddy appearance, and the fact that he's the youngest, David is the one. Now David never, certainly never expected to be considered a hero, much less a king. But if you track David, for almost his entire life, which you can do in 1 and 2 Samuel, you can see that for the most part, yes, he makes mistakes as an older person, as an adult, but for the most part, it is David's humility that helps him rise to become king. Of course, once he become, becomes king, as I mentioned just a moment ago, he, he, makes, some question, he, he makes some questionable decisions. But here... In the very beginning, before all the fanfare, before all the military accolades, before he united the monarchies, here at the beginning, it isn't fanfare or war medals or grand gestures that pleased God. It was David's humility. So what is it that we can learn from this boy who would become king well, I think one thing we can learn, and certainly one thing that we will pass on to our children at Vacation Bible School, is that God can, uh, God will, and indeed God does use every one of us. From the slight and the small and the young, to the old and bent over, God uses all of us. We are, in fact, all of us, heroes in God's eyes. Amen.
Well, I hope that you have found the past few minutes that we've been able to spend together in prayer and hearing scripture and, and certainly hearing music. I hope that you found uh, that, that God was speaking to you in some way, shape or form, or that you encountered the Holy Spirit. That certainly is our goal every time I lead worship here at Grace United Methodist Church. And now I wanna invite you to hear this benediction. In the name of the one who loves you more than you could ever know, go forth from this place changed. Changed by this encounter with God, changed by this encounter with scripture. Go in forth in peace, ready to offer the light and love of Christ to all you encounter. Go in peace. Amen.